So we're currently considering this um, question of how we manage success, uh, that when things go well, when plans that we've made suddenly start to happen or we start to experience success, how we can avoid allowing that to derail us or lead us into making mistakes, how we can manage success. And we're looking at how John the Baptist deals with the success of his ministry. And the second of John the Baptist's uh, responses is how he deals with his challenge of power, where he's ministering in the power of the Holy Spirit and people are coming to him and he's got influence over people. And we've seen that he responds by being consistent, but also this uh, question of con conviction. That conviction of the Holy Spirit gives us a right perspective of success. Um, if, we, if we understand things correctly, then we see that uh, the, the, to deal with that challenge of power, we recognise there's power rooted in submission that leads to an acceptance of our true standing before God. There's power rooted in relationship that gives us a passion for the things of God. But there's also, as we saw last time, a power rooted in purity which leads us to a freedom and a deeper intimacy with God. This picture of baptism of the Holy Spirit is a, a picture of a baptism of fire. And this, this sense of fire is that fire is powerful, it's consuming, it's dynamic, it produces movement, it refines, it burns away the rubbish. And when we put that alongside John the Baptist understanding his role, we know that John the Baptist is saying, I'm keeping my eyes on the prize. My role is to be the forerunner. My role is to prepare the way for Jesus to come, to prepare the way for people to meet the Messiah. And he recognises that Jesus will come and baptise people with a deeper power and a deeper conviction than John has experienced or John is doing. John's baptism is often called a baptism of repentance. And I think there's something good in that, that when we come to baptism as new believers, when we begin our relationship with Jesus, getting baptised is that first thing we do to symbolise we're dying to our old way of life, we're starting again. There's a, a baptism of repentance. Um, and John is inviting people to get right with God. And that's a, a, a challenge for us today that's just as relevant. When we come into that relationship with, with God, with Jesus Christ, Jesus then invites us to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be baptised in the Holy Spirit, so that we receive that anointing and that power to live. An encounter with Jesus is meant to change us. It, it's meant to help us move on from where we are into fullness of life, into life as it was always designed, and life as it was always meant to be. And that Holy Spirit uh, picture is, is a picture of He's given us power to live. Power to live today, but power to live forever. Power to break the control of sin and to bring us into a freedom but power to also break the authority of Satan. There's something of the miraculous that comes with the Holy Spirit, and we see with the early church that they were moving in the power of the Holy Spirit, and they saw the Holy Spirit do miraculous things. And that, that is something in today's society we probably lack, and we probably need to get back to that place of being more dependent on the Holy Spirit, and being willing to step out for that miraculous, to step out into the unknown. The challenge of uh, John the Baptist of dealing with power is that really it's about, it's about knowing the power giver, being filled with the Holy Spirit who reveals Jesus to us. And as we connect with Jesus and we walk with Jesus, he sends the Holy Spirit to give us the power to do work like Jesus. Not only does he help us to resist the temptations uh, of power, um, he also gives the power to, to live correctly. So not only is there um, power rooted in purity, what we have is, is, is power rooted in purpose, where actually God wants us to work in the power of the Holy Spirit, that people's um, realisation of who he is realises that the natural only goes so far uh, and actually there is a supernatural dynamic to life that says we need to uh, move off the back of the miraculous to realise that we need to be right with God. 
the the conviction of the Holy Spirit therefore gives us the power to resist temptation uh, and to avoid being corrupted in the first place uh, and, and when the Holy Spirit comes he wants to burn up those things those roots that chaff the stuff that's there of our old way of life that would just damage the harvest so uh, I guess my challenge to us today is will we allow the Holy Spirit to burn up that chaff so that the harvest can be um, more bountiful but also we can then move in the power of the Holy Spirit to see the purposes of God being fulfilled in our generation and our day.